Welcome, welcome. How are we doing out there, fly tires? Hope you're all doing well. Brady Lair with you. Gonna tie up the Skinny Dip Crystal. This is a variation of the $3 dip and the Serendipity. So designed out of Montana on the Madison River. Uh, originally the $3 bridge, if you're familiar. Cool little spot there. Uh, but yeah, nice evolution of this fly. So we'll go ahead and tie up a Skinny Dip Crystal here. Starting out on a pretty standard hook for us, the 2488. And I am putting a size 16 into the vise. It's a little large for this pattern, in all honesty. You wanna be typically 18s or smaller, but in the right situation, a 16 can do you just fine. And then I'm gonna use some Vivas thread. This is 14 aught gray on this pattern today. So we'll just start some nice smooth wraps. We do want to be fairly consistent with this body. It's going to be a very slim body for this pattern. So I like to walk on back and then I have a couple of materials I'm going to tie in on the back and work my way forward on. The first being the wire, so the segmentation to this fly. And we have the UTC wire in small silver there. Take a little bit of that. And you can upsize or downsize this wire. The small is good on the 16s and 18s, but if you get smaller than that, you definitely want to go with a smaller gauge wire. And I'm going to tie that in on the back, but I'm going to leave it hanging out basically that full length of the shank so that as I go forward, it's going to be nice and smooth. The next material that's going to go in is actually some tinsel, which is what makes this the crystal version of this fly. And I'm using some of this Paragon body from Semperfly. This is the Paragon uh, iridescent purple color. So it's mostly pearl, but it has that nice purple inlay on it. Makes for a really awesome coloration once it's all wrapped forward. It is a little bit small gauged for this overall, honestly. The regular pearl tinsel from Hairline and the medium gauge be nice and easy to use instead but I do like just this color overall and it is good on the smaller flies as well so we'll tie that in along with the wire don't have to worry as much about how far up that tinsel goes because it's not going to add really any bulk as compared to the wire here but we do want to just walk over that wire nice and smooth all the way forward the pattern that you saw on the vise to start the video I had a little bit of a large thorax on, so we're gonna kind of try to cut that down a little bit on this tie. So now I have a nice smooth thread body that we can wrap our tinsel forward over top. And so this is gonna take a bit of wraps, again, just because of that small gauge tinsel. But in the end, it's worth it for me. It's a very subtle, clear body on this fly. You can do some different colors and play around with it. Like anything in fly tying, you know, sort of take from what works, adapt and, you know, create your own. Or if you're one of those people that just wants to stay true to the pattern exactly, you know, there's a lot of good reasons for why things have been developed over time. But this gives a nice clear pearl body, very subtle keeps it similar to like an RS2 coloration, but it has just a little bit of shimmer underneath there. We'll take that up and capture it off, leaving right about one hook eyes in distance, I think is gonna be good to avoid that large thread head. And then we bring our wire forward. We're gonna counter wrap our wire with a little bit more open wraps forward. For that segmentation, the silver really pops on this fly. I've seen it done with copper as well. We'll run that up. Let me give it one more. And we can capture that in place. Make sure it's locked down pretty good. And spin out the excess. We'll place that wire somewhere where we can find it next time. Now we're going to go into sort of that emerging aspect, kind of a, a little tractor, I guess, 
could be a bit of a shock breaking away. But just one little piece of crystal flash and UV ultraviolet. We'll go ahead and snag half of it on one side, walk forward a couple of wraps, pull it back over to the other side, just a couple of wraps back, and then we can trim that somewhat short. It's We're gonna leave it fairly long, but we can trim it down like so. I don't know if anybody else is familiar with the ice fishing tag end theory, but whenever I have a bug like this where I can leave just a strand way off that might tickle, the idea is that you're just gonna tickle a fish and they're gonna turn and strike. So I'm uh, not opposed to the idea. I don't know if I've ever seen proof of it, but I like the idea. And we're gonna add a little bit of elk hair. So this is true to the pattern overall, the any variation of it. Pretty sparse elk hair. I like the bleached for this. Just a nice bright bug overall. But really, I only have about 10 strands or so of this elk hair. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to clip off the tips because I want to tie it in on the tip end. It's just a little bit more fine that way. It's going to help me avoid a larger bump overall. And we'll come right up over top of it. If we can capture it, we'll spin our thread counterclockwise and that'll help get it to jump rearward on the material. So we'll capture it. I don't want to bite down into it too much because I want to be able to wrap over top of all of it. So you have to be a little bit ginger with this moment. And we'll pull it all up and really bite into it now. And then we just want to cover over all of that exposed bleached elk hair and make a decent thread head there without going too crazy on this fly i always make a big bulbous thread head and we can come in and whip finish it off just a few turns like so nice and tight and then we're going to come in and trim just our elk hair. So we want to avoid all that crystal flash to hang right out the back. We'll grab all of our elk hair and come in and trim that fairly short, just like so. And that gives us a nicely finished crystal dip. Simple pattern. It's kind of a guide style pattern. You can come through and hit that thread head. Looks like I missed covering some of that with some gray thread, but when it comes down to it, the fish aren't gonna care. Um, so a nice little pattern, fairly simple pattern, nice guide pattern. You can whip a lot of these out pretty quickly and I can almost guarantee they'll catch fish. If you put it in the right place, it will, but that part's on you. So get out there and get after them. Thanks for watching, have fun tying. Check out avidmax.com for all your fly tying needs and we will see you on the next tying tutorial. Have a great day.